Imagine we have a ruler. What tools or what things do we need to see different things at different distances? If you want to see outside of our solar system, galaxies, whatever, generally we're going to use a radio telescope. We're going to see things that are on the order, on the size of 10 to the 24th meters big. If we want to see something in our, in our solar system, planets, moons, whatever, usually we use some sort of an optical telescope, seeing us out in the 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 12th uh, meter range. If you want to see something that's visible, nice cute little puppy dog, um, usually use our eye in the 10 to the, 10 to the 4, 10 to the minus 4 meter range. If you want to peer down and see a cell, microscope, all the way down, electron microscope. If we want to see things that are on the size of 10 to the minus 15, 10 to the tw minus 20 meters, we need particle accelerators. And why is that? Well, there was a, a physicist many years ago, Ernie DeBurl. He showed us that moving particles have an equivalent wavelength. And the way that works is that their, their wavelength is inversely proportional to their momentum. So as a particle gains higher momentum, they have shorter wavelength. You see that shown here. So short wavelength, high momentum, long wavelength, low momentum. Particle accelerators operate here, so high momentum, short wavelength. Allows us to have finer resolution, see things on a much smaller scale. Let's add a little bit of uh, old Albert's work. You see that here, total energy of something. And high energy, and this tells us how particles can get that high momentum. So high energy can give us high momentum, which is going to give us short wavelength targets. And that can make out small detail. Any questions? We're going to talk about how we accelerate particles now. OK, let's imagine we have two plates of metal. One is charged positively, one is charged negatively. We have some voltage across them. And the electric field between those plates is proportional to the voltage divided by the distance between those two plates. You can imagine something sitting between there is going to have a force applied to it. And that force is proportional to the charge of whatever is in between those plates times the electric field. Or using the equation above, it's the force times the voltage divided by the distance between the two. You see that schematically over here. So let's suppose we have an electron, and it's sitting in this field. As it accelerates from the right hand to the left hand plate, the change in energy is equal to the work done. This is not the electric field. This is the change in energy is equal to the force times the distance. And from that, you see that's equal to the charge on the particle times the voltage. We know the charge on an electron, that's a given, is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th Coulomb on a proton. It's just reverse. So we can say that an electron or a proton accelerated through one volt gains an amount of energy equal to one electron volt. That's the standard measure of energy that we use in the accelerator, actually, in the physics world. If you go back to MKS units, one electron volt equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And in the example above, we have a 9-volt battery connected to these plates. The electron is getting accelerated from one plate to the other. So we can say that our electron gains 9 electron volts in that case. How fast is that electron moving? Any idea? Let's figure it out. If it started from rest, if it started from sitting in my hand, the change in energy is equal to 1 half mass times velocity squared. And so our velocity can reduce that or convert it is 2 times the change in energy divided by the mass, take the square root of that. Plug in all the numbers, 1.8 million meters per second. Pretty zippy thing. It's 4 million miles an hour. But it's only 6 tenths the speed of 6 tenths of a percent of the speed of light. If we look at a proton, which is uh, almost 2,000 times heavier than an electron, its speed is only 90,000 miles an hour. So fast, but not that fast. So question, how much voltage do you think we can deliver to a particle? Let's start with our TV set. How much voltage is available in a TV set? If you look at a classic TV or a cathode ray tube, you've got a filament in the back that is heated up, some electrons are emitted, something on a cathode, and then electromagnetic fields accelerate the particles 
towards a phosphorescent screen and steer them so they hit the, the place in the screen where you want them to hit. That's how, that's our accelerator. And then we have an evacuated glass tube so they don't get scattered along the way. You want them to hit that screen where you send it. So it's a little more complicated, but you can see the cathode is back here. This is the focusing and accelerating part of the phosphorescent screen up here. So how much voltage are we talking? When they say caution, no user serviceable parts inside, caution high voltage, they're right. <coughs> There's about 10,000 volts inside of the back of the TV set. So when it's plugged in, you really don't want to stick your fingers in there. So our particle energies are about 10,000 electron volts in a TV set. So how fast are we moving now if we have an electron coming off of the cathode on the TV and hitting the screen? Well, like we said, electron in a typical TV set has an energy of about 10,000 10 keV. If you do the math, that's about 30 times faster than our previous example with the 9 electron volt electron. It's about 2 tenths of the speed of light. So let's do some math. If we 0.2c for 10. So if we multiply this times 5 and have 50 keV <coughs> electrons, we multiply that times 5, does that mean 50 keV electrons should be going at the speed of light? Yes, no, maybe? No. I'm supposed to tell you? No. Something called relativity kicks in. And you should have heard about that last week, I hope. Yep. Okay. Relativity, near the speed of light, plays a big role in high energy particle acceleration. And for now, we're going to look at some basics. Hopefully, this is a review from what you heard about next week, specifically for particle accelerators. So, well, Albert said E equals mc squared. That applies only to the rest energy of a particle sitting still. When it's in motion, its total energy is given by this relation. So you see E equals still mc squared, but now there's a factor in the denominator, which is dependent on the particle's velocity compared to the speed of light. Obviously, when the velocity is much, much less than the speed of light, this just comes out to be mc squared plus 1 half mv squared, sort of the classical measure of energy. But as the energy of the particle is increased, as it approaches the speed of light, and it can never exceed or even reach the speed of light, like here, things change. This ratio equals E over mc squared reverse, <coughs> we often denote as gamma. And so we can say the total energy of a particle relativistically is given by gamma mc squared. So the total momentum related is gamma mv. So moving on, let's look at a couple picture, a couple plots. Kinetic energy, speed, and speed we're here, this, this uh, y-axis is velocity of whatever we have proportionate to the speed of light. So as something gains more energy, its speed increase, speed increases, but you notice as it gains more, at some point it rolls over and it approaches, but it never will get to or exceed the speed of light. As our energy continues to go up, you see this, the velocity at some point really levels off. The velocity doesn't go up anymore. And it's about 2,000 MeV, 2 GeV for a proton, 1.5 MeV or 1 MeV for an electron. Meanwhile, as our kinetic energy goes up on this one, we're looking at the momentum. You see the momentum sort of starts off steeply, but then levels, uh, sort of rolls over, but continues to increase proportionately, almost linearly, as we approach the speed of light. So we can get, as we accelerate particles, what we're saying in summary here is as you accelerate particles close to the speed of light, at some point they really don't get any faster, their velocity doesn't increase, but their momentum does continue to increase at a linear rate. 